What is up, beautiful people? Mr. P back with another video. Today we're going to do a comprehensive range test on the Neo EC6 SUV, and as well, we're going to also do a Neo Pilot test because Neo Pilot has been updated. So we're going to go to this beautiful place called Gu Bei Shui Jin, which is right next to a Great Wall, and it's supposed to have a lake. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful, and. But first we're gonna go to a battery swap station. So this is the whole entire trip. It's supposed to take around 100 kilometers. Gate, then we can activate our Neo Pilot, which is really cool. So let's see. First, we're going to pass this. Okay, good. We're all good. And then we're going to go up this ramp. Now, why don't we try activating it while we're on the ramp? Alright. So it's telling me to switch lanes. It's switching lanes for me. And hopefully I don't hit the barricade. That's pretty cool. All right, that's nice. You know, every once in a while I have to hold the uh, steering wheel. Right now it's at 60. We're gonna try to do the whole entire trip on Neo Pilot if that's possible. So I'm not hitting the accelerator. I'm not steering. I'm just gripping the wheel every once in a while so that it doesn't warm me and jump out. So, all right. That was a, that was a bit tough steering all right all right come on steer all right nice we're in the main highway road we're with everybody else now the, the limit speed limit for Neo pilot is right now 120 that is a bit high all right I'm, I'm on the steering wheel holy crap all right this is this is nerve-wracking guys come on Alright, we're at 105 right now, and it's driving pretty fast, it's doing its job, oh my god, that's a sudden boost of acceleration, I was not expecting that, just went to 105 to 110, and we're still going fine, I'm not hitting the accelerator, this is just Neo Pilot doing its job, it's telling me it wants to switch lane, so I'm just going to give it the confirmation to switch lane, decelerates, switches lane, there's a car in front, it notices that speed decelerates down to 80, 83. I don't know why I wanted to switch lanes. I'm just, whatever. I'll follow whatever Neopilot wants me to do. Now, obviously, if you don't want to, um, if you want the steering, the switching lane to be automatic, you can do that as well. There's a setting for that. But I want to make sure that, you know, I have complete control so if it wants to switch lanes then I'll just turn on the turn signal and to confirm the switch lane and the Neo Pilot will do it for me so right now we're at 95 pretty cool there's a lot of cars on the road so I gotta be diligent all right that's pretty cool a big truck just passed and uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that a little but it kind of veered to the left a little bit just to avoid him because he was kind of really close to my lane so it's a raining a little bit it's beautiful weather I actually love this weather it's not too hot not too cold a little bit of rain not too windy we got the mountains in the back we're going to head over to the mountains that's really awesome so all these people on the road they're 
on vacation, right? Everybody's on vacation. They're leaving Beijing. Oh, so the car decelerated a little bit because he went into my lane. Now, I hope you guys can see the speedometer so you guys can pay attention to that and see what the car does. So, I'm maintaining a very, very safe distance, but people will definitely enter my lane. So, let me uh, decrease the safe distance. It's going to accelerate a little. Is this guy going to try to cut me off? Because that is going to... Alright. He cuts me off, but your pilot's like, Hey, that's cool. You're going at faster than me. Alright. So, man, this... I, I, you know, this is a lot of traffic. I'm traveling at 88, 85. Not too fast, not too slow. The max speed limit is 120. And right now... New pilot has set that as 120. Default is 120. So that's pretty nice. Now, new pilot can recognize when it's uh, dotted lines or solid lines. So it'll know that if it's solid lines, you can't turn and you know, switch lanes or do any of that. And when it's dotted lines, you can. So that just now is a warning to hold the steering wheel. So that's what I'm going to do. Give you know, hold the steering wheel, give it a little nudge. Every once in a while, it'll do that. So here we have a gentle right turn. It's not too aggressive, but you can see Neopilot's doing its job. It's turning like it's supposed to turn. That is pretty awesome. Now, I'll, I'll, oh, it's recommending lane switch. Oh, but there's a car coming in from the back. I think you can see from the rear view mirror. So it's not doing the lane switch, but the turn signal's still on. There's still a car coming from the back, so it's still not going to switch. The turn signal is still on. It still wants to do the lane switch, and now it's going to do the lane switch. So, Neil Pilot can even see that way, way, way behind me on the left side, there's a car coming in, and it's pretty fast. So, let's not do the lane switch until he passes by you. That's pretty cool. Now we're up to speed. We're at 117. Man... This is nerve-wracking. Hey, this guy, don't get too close to me, man. So, nice. This is Neil Pilot, my friend. I mean, wow. I, I, this whole entire time, I have not hit the accelerator or the brakes once. Right? Ever since I activated Neil Pilot, it's all been him. And it's just me holding on to the steering wheel every once in a while to make sure that it's good. Another lane change. Come on, really? So, Neil Pilot just wants to go to whichever lane is the fastest. Ooh, did Neil Pilot just quit? All right, so it stopped the lane change all of a sudden, turned back, and then now it's back on my the most left lane. So, this is kind of strange. Why, why Neil Pilot will always want to go switch lanes I think it's just because they want to go to the lane that's the fastest and they see that the traffic over there is the fastest so it's going to go to that lane so man wow look at that scenery man it's absolutely beautiful there have been several new pilot accidents where people you know don't hold on to the steering wheel don't pay attention to the road they buy this little grip thing that grips onto the steering wheel right here and it's so tight that the car thinks you're holding on to the steering wheel and it's not going to give you the warnings and what happens is because the car is going so fast and that's and most of these accidents what happen is uh there's a uh traffic cones and a, a bunch of uh, traffic construction on the highway and the traffic construction vehicle is stationary so the car is going so fast it can't it doesn't see the cones in time doesn't see the traffic construction vehicle in time and it just runs into it so that's the danger so we're back in the middle lane again so oh man now obviously if I didn't want them to switch lanes that often I can just ignore the uh, Neil pilots suggestion of switching lanes whenever it suggests to switch lanes it'll indicate on the HUD that there's two solid lines on the HUD this one will flash blue to indicate to you that they want to switch lanes so we're going pretty fast 112 not bad so far I have not had to intervene once 
I mean, it gets the job done, my friend. This is pretty nice. It gets the job done. And such a beautiful scenery. What impressed me the most is so far that, you know, sometimes it wants to switch lanes, but if, oh, that's a, why is there a burst in acceleration? What? Huh. So that that's kind of strange. Sometimes it's just, just a burst in acceleration. Maybe it's following the car in front a little bit too much. Maybe that's why. So what's impressed me the most is the fact that when the car wants to switch lane, I confirm the lane switch and it sees a car that's behind me, way, way, way behind me, but it's coming in fast. It'll not switch lanes. It'll hold on until the car has passed. So that is very, very, very cool. 105, there's a gentle right turn. I'm not doing anything. I'm just, you know, gripping onto the steering wheel to let the car know that I'm paying attention. You always need to pay attention. And all over here, there's actually a camera that monitors fatigue, driving fatigue. And also, when you're on Neo Pilot, it'll check if your eyes aren't on the road. If your eyes aren't on the road, then it'll give you a warning. Keep your eyes on the road. Now, there is a downside to that. The downside is if you're in a very dark condition or, you know, if you're in a very dark condition at night, sometimes it can't see you that well. And also, this is, uh, I guess, uh, a little bit racist, but uh, if you're Asian and you got small eyes, like me, I got small eyes, sometimes the camera doesn't know that you got your eyes open. So that kind of, that's kind of, uh, you know, well, whatever, you'll just have to live with it. So, uh, yeah, so this lane is not going so fast. It's telling me to switch lanes. Let's confirm the lane switch. Is it gonna switch lanes? Successfully switch lanes. Wow, look at that. And then I just gotta turn off the turn signal. That's pretty cool. So it was this van that was going really, really slow. So here we are on the highway. Man, Neil Pilot gets the job done. It is less uh, exhausting to drive on Neil Pilot, but it does still require you to constantly pay attention to the road, see what's going on on the road, make sure that you're ready to press the brake or take over whenever it's necessary. So this is Neil Pilot, my friend. Man. It's going pretty fast, 119. This this is the speed limit. 120 is the speed limit. So cool. So what you can also do is you can manually adjust the speed limit over here on these two buttons. This is speed down, this is speed up. You can press it once and then it'll go down by uh, one digit increments. So press it down once, it'll go from 120 to 119. But if you hold and keep on pressing, it'll go down by increments of five. So it'll be like, 115, 110, 105. So the car in front of me is decelerating. My car is also decelerating. That's pretty cool. And then these two buttons are for the distance between your car and the car in front of you. So if you want to increase the distance between your car and the car in front of you, you press this button, all right? If you want to decrease the distance, you press this button down here. So we just did another lane switch. This is pretty, pretty awesome. So Neil Pilot just wants to go to whichever lane is the fastest. So that's pretty cool. My foot is getting tired from hovering over the brakes, so I'm gonna let it rest for a little bit. Hopefully, I won't need to press the brakes or suddenly decelerate, take control, whatever. So there's a Tesla over there. I'm pretty sure that Tesla's also using autopilot. Yeah, he's not holding the steering wheel, he's using autopilot. So, yeah, I mean like, if you want, you know, autopilot, Neo Pilot, they both do similar things. Obviously, you can debate which one's better. Left turn, he wants to left turn, but there's a car over there, it's not gonna left turn. Obviously, wait for that guy to pass, and then it's going to left turn. So, yeah, cool. Look at that, wow. So successful left, left turn. Now we're just going straight, 104. So I'm just gonna follow whatever Neil Pilot wants me to do. If it wants to switch lanes, I'll switch lanes, whatever it wants to do, sure. 
So, obviously this isn't a replacement for uh, driving, all right? Even the robo taxis you see in Germany and uh, in, um, in Israel that they're launching very soon, that, that's the ES8 with mobile eye LiDAR technology, multiple levels of redundancies. So they got LiDARs built on top, on the side of the vehicle, on the front of the vehicle. And even with all that, there's still a driver inside. Now the driver is just there to monitor the road situation to make sure that if the, the, the situation comes where human intervention is needed, he's always there to press on the brakes or steer the car or do whatever. Which is, uh, which is you know, just how it works right now. No matter which car you have, no matter how advanced the autopilot is or new pilot is or the autonomous driving system is, it's still only L2. So we just passed a truck and it's telling me to switch lane, but it can't because the truck is still too close. Now it's switched lanes and I think we're gonna pick up some speed over here. And yeah, we did pick up some speed. We're at 119, 118, yeah, 119. Pretty, pretty cool. So, you know, there's always gonna be a need for a driver behind the wheel. Even if your, you know, just the system is so good, there's always going to be a need for the driver behind the wheel. Because there will always be a situation where the, uh, the computer system has never encountered before, right? Uh, I was reading a while back that there were some really, really, really interesting situations in America where these uh, Teslas were driving on autopilot and it would all of a sudden come to a stop because there was a big billboard that had stop sign on it. And, you know, the, the uh, Tesla autopilot thought that was like a legit stop sign and it would stop. That That's something that's, uh, you know, you always have to be careful of because... Uh, if it's just camera system and computer, how can it tell if it's just a billboard or if it's an actual legit sign? So there's another lane switch. Switch to the left because this is an empty lane. So here we are switching to the left. Check out this awesome view. It is beautiful. Here we got power plant over there. So we are driving at 120 max speed right now. The car is just Man, handling it very, very well, like a champ. No problem at all. 121. So, I guess it's downhill, so it's a little bit faster. We got a left turn, so it should be able to handle this, no problem. A slight left turn, not too harsh. It can clearly see the lines on the road. Now, there are certain times where Neopilot wouldn't work. I don't know why it wants to switch lanes, but I guess we'll we'll do whatever it wants to do. There are certain times where Neopilot wouldn't work, and that is when it's raining really hard, right? That really screws up the radar sensors. When it's raining really hard, it really screws up the radar sensors. It can't sense what's in front of them, and it's also there's a lot of reflections on the road. So when it's raining and there's rainwater on the ground, there's a lot of reflections. So Sometimes the cameras can't see the lines that well, and it's get, it, it, the cameras are blinded by the lights. Let's uh, let's switch lanes. Yeah, the, the car was thinking the same thing. Switch lanes, because this guy is a. You see that little yellow badge on the car? That means I'm a I'm a new guy, new to driving. I'm driving really slow. You gotta be careful of me. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna pass him. And yeah, those are the kind of vehicles that are most likely to get into a car accident. So it's telling me to hold on to steering wheel. Another time when Neopilot wouldn't work is when you have a uh, bright sun or when the sun's just, uh, when it's in the morning and there's a bright sun and that shines a lot of light into the cameras and that might not work as well. So. Yeah, during sunset and uh, sunrise, when the sun is at a very, very low angle, that's when new pilot also might not work. So what's really interesting just now was this uh, Tesla just now, he was on autopilot. I'm pretty sure he's on autopilot. And you see he still has that turn signal on. So he's definitely on autopilot. And just now he was trying to turn into the right lane, but the bus 
also turned into the right lane, into that lane. So the car all of a sudden uh, just stopped going to that lane and went, stayed in his own lane, which is similar to what happened to uh, us a while back. So we're driving really nice, man, look at the weather. So the speed limit has just changed to 100, which is really cool. You can actually see it over here, 100. So this is the speed limit on the road, the official speed limit. This is the speed limit I can set via the controls. So I can actually increase that if I want to. Oh, wait, here, yeah, so now it's 101. I can increase it to 102 if I wanted to, but speed limit's 100, so why not we follow the speed limit? So we are approaching a tunnel. So let's see how the Neo Pilot behaves when it's entering a tunnel. Now the car has uh, automatic lights. So if it's really dark, right, what it'll do is it'll turn on the headlights, it'll brighten, uh, it'll lower the brightness of the HUD, it'll lower the brightness of the displays. So that's pretty cool. Let's see how it performs. So we're entering the tunnel. It's not a very long tunnel. So nice, lights are turned on. Cool. Yeah, it's a very short tunnel. Nice. Look at this beautiful scenery. There's so many mountains and trees. Wow. Man, I wish I could do more road trips. You know, crossing China, I'm so jealous of him. He's able to drive his car all across China to go to all those different awesome places to see what China is all about you know he's been to places that I've never even been to man so in a sense he's actually more Chinese than I am so even though he, he's American I'm Canadian but you know by blood I'm, I'm Chinese but this guy he's 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 been to more places in China than I have so kudos to him man Tunnel and headlights on. Nice. This is the thing about the car, man. It tries to do a lot of things for you to make your driving experience a lot more comfortable. Like, even if your car is parked and then you're trying to open the door, but the car senses that there's a bike coming from behind, it'll warn you and, make, and just give you audio warning to make sure you know that hey maybe uh, be careful and not don't open the door yet so that's pretty cool wow this is a very very long tunnel we're gonna try something this is a solid line we're not supposed to do any lane switches but let's see if we can do any lane switches we can't that's cool right look we can't oh my god it's red it, it tells you you can't do lane switches because it's a solid line so that's that's pretty pretty uh, nice so Neil Pilot does obey traffic laws. Now that the trip is over, let's talk a bit about the range and performance of the vehicle and how much energy my car actually consumed for this road trip. The whole entire trip was 98.8 kilometers. We saved 6.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide from being emitted. Uh, total energy consumption was 21 kilo hours. Energy consumption per 100, kilo, uh, 100 kilometers is 21.3 kilowatt hours. Total time was 105 minutes, average speed 56.7. And then here we can see that the 
uh, energy consumption map, 97% of the energy was used to drive the vehicle and then 3% was others. So that 3% is like charging your phone and then the general display, etc. And then we can also see the Neo Pilot usage <clears throat> for 83% of the trip, 82 kilometers, we were using Neo Pilot and we used Neo Pilot for 55 minutes continuously. And we can see how the speed uh, varied. And then we also have the energy consumption map down here below. So that's pretty cool. Now, on the way back, uh, it was raining very, very hard. Uh, I was not able to use Neopilot because it was raining super hard. Visibility was super low. So that was in no condition for Neopilot. So on the way back, it was 99.9 .9 kilometer road trip, right? 100 kilometers, basically. And the total energy consumption per 100 kilometers was 20.7. Now, what's really interesting is uh, let's take a look at how it performs in the city. So in the city, you can actually get it as low as 15.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or even uh, or around 16.2. So let's take the higher end of that 16.2 and do an extrapolation. So... With the 70, 70 kilowatt hour battery, which is what I have right now, we get a range of 328 kilometers on the highway and 430 kilometers on just daily street driving, which is 430 is actually the NEDC rated range. So that's pretty cool that this all matches up. And then for the 100 kilowatt hour battery, with my energy consumption, I can get 470 kilometers on the highway and 617 kilometers on the road. Not bad. And then with the 150 kilowatt hour pack, I can get 704 kilometers on the highway and 925 kilometers just on the street. So this is pretty amazing. And the fact that, you know, Neo has so many battery tiers just enables Neo owners to choose how much range they want and how much uh, range they need based on their driving habits. So in conclusion, Neo Pilot is pretty good. It does its job. Obviously, it doesn't work in very harsh conditions. Neo's range, 328 kilometers on the highway for my 70 kilowatt hour battery isn't exactly super, super good, but it get, it's enough and with battery swap stations all over the highway there's plenty of battery swap stations for you to swap and of course swap and go and these battery swap stations are placed 140 kilometers apart from each other 328 kilometers of range is enough to make it to at least one or maybe even two swap stations now if you do, don't want to swap you can also charge and there are plenty of chargers on the highway guys if you haven't already checked out my patreon please go check out my patreon it enables me to create more videos for you guys and it just really helps me out a lot. So thank you guys so much for checking out my Patreon. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a good one.